This is Precalc 12, Chapter 3.4. We're going to continue looking at transforming graphs. This time, we're going to combine all the transformations into one. So, how do we plot this? We plot the original function. We apply stretching and compression for the horizontal and vertical. Then we apply any horizontal and vertical reflections. And finally, we apply the translations. It is important to do this in the correct order. If you reverse the order and do translations first, your graph will be incorrect. Uh, the other option that you can do is do all the transformations for each point and then connect the curves. Let's look at an example. Here we have f of x is equal to x squared, a simple function. Let's look at g of x. This is 1 half x minus 1. So the first step is to scale. This half represents b, and this is horizontal stretching. So we need to divide the numbers by a half. So we have 1 divided by half is 2. So we complete the scaling. And then we do the translation of moving 1 to the right. We move the whole curve right 1. Now, if we translate this first, so we move the whole graph right 1 for x squared, and now we scale. Well, we don't scale the 0 point because 0 divided by a half is still 0. We look at 2. 2 divided by a half is 4. We look at this point. Negative 1 divided by a half is negative 2. And 3 divided by a half is 6. You can see that these two graphs are different. So order is important. To transform the pre-image to an image, we have x prime equals x over b plus h. y prime equals a y plus k. To go from the image to the pre-image, we need to go in reverse. So let's do the algebra. x prime minus h equals x over b. So x equals b times x prime minus h in brackets. And for y prime, minus k equals a y. So y equals y prime minus k over a. Let's do this with an example. We have f of x equal to x squared between negative 2 and 2. We have g of x is equal to negative 3 times f of 1 half times x minus 3 in brackets plus 2. Okay, you can do the scaling and reflection in the same time. So we have 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. So we have that here and here. And finally, we do the translation. So this is right 3 and up 2. So we take this point, move right 3 and up 2. So that's right 3 and up 2. This one goes right 3 and up 2, so that's here. Right 3 and up 2, so that's here. The other option is to go straight from here to there. We have x prime equals x over b, which is a half, plus h, which is 3. And y prime equals minus 3 times y plus k, which is 2. So we take 0, 0, plug it in, we get 3, 2, which is good. And we take 1, 1, so 1 times 2 plus 3 is 5. And here we have another 1, so minus 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. Take this point. Negative 1 divided by a half is negative 2 plus 3 is 1. And we should get the same result for 1 as well, which is negative 1. 
Okay, and that's how we do that. So, the rules for applying a transformation to the domain and range is the same as transforming a point. So we have the domain of F divided by B plus H. We have the range of G as A times the range of F plus K. So in this example, we have negative 2 to 2 and 0 to 4. So our domain is negative 2 divided by a half plus 3. It's less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2 divided by a half plus 3. And that's negative 1 to 7. The range, we have negative 3 times 4 plus 2. It's less than or equal to y. It's less than or equal to negative 3 times 0 plus 2. This gives us negative 10 to 2. Okay, let's look at the last type of problem. And it's arguably the most difficult one. We have points that are given, and we need to find the coefficients for the transformation. So here's an example. We have A is negative 5, negative 6, and B is negative 1, 6. A prime is equal to negative 13, 17, and B prime is equal to negative 1, negative 7. Just take this in steps. We have AX prime equal to AX over B plus H. So this converts into negative 13 equals negative 5 over B plus H. So H equals 5 over B minus 13. We have BX prime equal to BX divided by B plus H. So we have negative 1 equals negative 1 over B plus H. Now we can substitute this H into here. So we have negative 1 equals negative 1 over B plus 5 over B minus 13. And we can simply eliminate the brackets because we have a plus and a minus. Let's move the 13 over to the other side so it becomes positive. 13 minus 1 is 12. And we have 4 over B left on this side. So therefore, B must be 4 over 12, and that's 1 third. We need to plug this back into H equals 5 over 1 third minus 13. And this is 5 times 3, so 15 minus 13, and our answer is 2. So we've solved for B and H, now we need to solve for a and K. So use the formulas. A Y prime equals A times capital A Y plus K. And we get 17 equals A times negative 6 plus K. So K equals 6A plus 17. B Y prime equals a times by plus k. So we have negative 7 equals a times 6 plus k. Now we substitute k into here. So we get negative 7 equals 6a plus 6a plus 17. So negative 24 equals 12a, and a equals negative 2. This gives us, substituting back in, k equals 
6 times negative 2 plus 17. So this is negative 12 plus 17. And this equals 5. Coming up with our g of x, we have negative 2 times f of 1 third x minus 2 plus 5. And just a caution, questions can also be phrased as what transformations are or what are the constants. That completes this lesson.